Good afternoon and welcome to another unboxing video. Today we're going to be looking at the recent reprint of Dune the Board Game by Gale Force 9. So there's a wee bit of history to Dune. So Dune is actually a design from back in the 70s. Um, it's similar to games like Cosmic Encounter where you have different factions that have wildly different abilities uh, and the goal of the game is basically to try and control areas. And one of the, the neat mechanics in the game is that at various stages in the game you can ally with other players um, and work together to try and achieve victory. Now, one of the main draws for this game is, of course, the theme, which is based on Dune, um, which is Frank Herbert's universe. So, um, you know, the book, and then you also had the David Lynch movie as well. Uh, so, we're, without further ado, we'll just kind of have a wee look at the game and uh, crack it open and see what lies inside. So, uh, as you can see here, the box art is really quite nice. Um, we've got the big sandworm featured in the middle, and we've got some uh, soldiers down here, and you've got the kind of sweeping dunes. So, at a glance, it gives you a good idea of the setting of the game. You can also see there's two moons here, a wee bit like Tatooine in Star Wars. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely um, a kind of science fiction universe. Um, uh, on this desert planet. Okay, so we're gonna just turn to the back and you can see here it kind of shows you um, some of the components. I'll maybe just zoom in a wee bit here. Um, you can see here we've got the central board, we've got the player screens just to kind of uh, hide things because there's, there is some hidden information in this game. Um, a wee description of it. Um, so Dune, a game of conquest, diplomacy and betrayal. Um, and a wee blurb about, you know, what the game's about. So we've got, um, in June you will become the leader of one of the six great factions, each which is to control the most valuable resources in the universe, the Melange, which is also known as the Spice in this game. So it's really all about controlling the Spice um, and trying to secure uh, various strongholds on the game board. Um, at the bottom here, um, it tells you we've got the, the player counts, so two to six players. Um, I think this game plays best at the full complement, so really... If you're planning a game of this, you, you want to try and uh, make sure you play with six. The game can take up to two hours, two, two hours plus. It is definitely a longer game. Um, this version, I think, they've reduced the number of turns, which does make it a wee bit more manageable to get in uh, to your usual, you know, um, kind of five hours uh, game day. Um, but it can still be tricky. And age is 14 plus because it is quite a complex game, especially if you play with the advanced variant. Um, and then at the bottom here, you've just got the box contents, so it should tell you what um, we should have inside. Okay, and again, it's Gale Force Nights games, and they do a lot of um, uh, kind of uh, games that you you know have a license, um, and they do a pretty good job of it. You know, the game in this case they haven't designed the, the the mechanics, but the production for their games is usually really good. So um, we're just going to crack it open now. Okay, folks, I decided to just to change the camera angles there, uh, just so that we can get a wee bit more light on the contents of the box. So. When you first open it, um, the first thing you will see is this helpful quick start guide, um, which lists the six factions in the game, and it just gives you a wee description of the factions there on the front page. Um, if you flip the book open, it then uh, shows you how to set up the uh, spice bank and the map, and then over here it's got the kind of individual players' uh, starting setups in terms of what components they need. And moving on, it actually kind of guides you through the setup for each of the individual factions, and it's got little uh, kind of um, wee characters kind of telling you about the setup there, which is a nice wee touch there. You know, it's almost like a kind of wee comic book thing where they're they're kind of uh, guiding you through it, which is really quite nice. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good production for the the guy. Nice illustrations. It's all kind of clearly um, kind of laid out, um, and yeah, it's uh, as you can see the the art style. You know, it's um, it's quite nice as well. So yeah, so that's the quick start guide there, and then at the back it gives you a kind of brief sequence of play with all the phases as well, so that's quite nice for reference. And um, we then have the full rule book. Um, again, I'm not gonna go through the full thing here, but you can just see that, again, full color, nice and glossy, good print, and it actually looks really qu quite clearly laid out. Um, a lot of work, I think, has went in to this from fans of the game. Um, because there was a print and play version that someone had made and they'd revised the rules and I think a lot of that 
has been used for this printing of the game. So yeah, again, it just this is a, a breaking down the factions in a wee bit more, and it tells you the difference between the advanced rules and the um, the basic game. And in the back here, you've got a wee synopsis about June, so it tells you a wee bit about the kind of universe and the lore. And then a wee uh, Q and A at the back or FAQ about some kind of common questions that come up during gameplay. Okay. And then finally on the back here, you've got the optional rules. So depending um, on uh, how you want to play the game with the alliances, uh, you can opt for a longer or shorter game uh, by just basically altering the, num the maximum um, players for the alliances and also um, how many strongholds you need to win the game. So that can really kind of uh, change the game quite significantly. Okay, so that is the um, game uh, rules there. We then have the... Player, uh, board, uh, well, player screens here and you can see here a uh, really nice print, nice kind of matte finish actually so you can see there's not too much reflection on them so they're not really glossy and again you've got the illustrations, you've got the leader uh, for the factions in the middle there and in the back it tells you um, a wee bit about strategy about you know what, you know how, how really gives you some kind of guide, guidance on how to play your faction you know and you know what their strengths are okay so that's really you also have these cards here as well, um, again one for each of the factions, so you really do get a lot of reference materials with this game, which is really helpful because the trickiest part of the game is understanding um, the factions' powers and how they interact with each other, so having these to hand is really useful for when you're uh, trying to teach the game to new players, you know, you can just hand them their card and it basically breaks it down, so at the start you know, gives them their setup, their revival, how many forces they get for free, what their advantages are, when they ally, what abilities they're going to get, you know, and then on the reverse it's got more rules and things as well. So yeah, so these are really, really handy, so there's lots of reference materials for this game. Uh, moving on, we've got the punch boards, and um, these are basically the troops. Um, you'll notice some troops have got little uh, black stars on them, they're basically stronger troops that certain factions have access to. Um, there's also the, these kind of cloaked ones as well um, for the Bene Gesserit, they have a special ability too. We then have uh, all the spice tokens, so these go on the map um, and basically you try and uh, hold areas with the spice and at the end um, there's a phase where you collect the spice and the spice is basically like a currency in the game. Uh, we then have punch boards with the leaders and the, the two battle wheels. So in the game, um, when you have a battle with someone, basically you are selecting a number using the battle wheel and you're basically placing your leader that you're using for the battle in here. And it's all kind of hidden. So it's like a, you know, kind of a, a hidden um, a simultaneous selection. And then when both players have locked in, you reveal, you know. So the, the battle system, it's, it's I'm not going to go into it in detail. It's quite, um, it can be quite involved and it can be quite unpredictable because even though a lot of it is deterministic, you know you know how many forces your opponent has, you know what leaders they have access to, you also have cards that kind of mess with that, you know, um, and you know, people, players can do unexpected things by, you know, picking up, you know, the, the, the number of troops they commit, so the, the battles can be quite tense, I've found. And we've also got some tokens here for a few events in the game, so if the shield wall gets destroyed, um, then you place that down in the territories, um, you've got a, a token here for the Atreides player um, that basically gives them a plus two once a condition's met in combat. And you also have uh, the Storm Marker that moves around, um, which uh, basically you you know destroys your units um, if you're not careful. And um, we then here have the, the game board. Now this is a wee bit different from the um, the reprint. Well, not reprint. Sorry, the print and play one. Um, in the sense that the outside of the board has this kind of blue background um, as opposed to the kind of tan background. Um, in pictures, I kind of preferred the other one, but see looking at this now, like in front of me, it actually looks pretty striking. Um, it worked quite well on this table as well, you know, just with the blue with the blue. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the board. Um, decent quality, you know, thick cardboard. So yeah, that should hopefully stand uh, the test of time. And then finally here we've got the different cards. So you've got your treachery cards, um, which are basically um, cards that you can uh, use to influence battles and do various different effects. Um, you've got attack, defense, and then you've got kind of utility ones. 
You also have space cards, which shows you where the, the space is going to um, uh, basically appear um, during the game. There'll be a space flow and space will appear in certain territories, and this basically will um, um, you know, determines where they're going to go. Um, there is a, a faction that kind of uh, gets insider info about that and knows you know they get to have a look at the, the cards before they, they get revealed. Um, here you've got the leader cards. Um, you also have traitor cards as well. So in this game, um, well, these aren't leader cards, so these are traitor cards. In this game, um, you are dealt a leader card. Um, there's one faction that's dealt, there's four actually. And uh, during a battle, if your opponent plays uh, or uses the leader um, and you have a card for that leader, then they basically uh, become a turncoat and you win the battle automatically, regardless of you know anything that's played. Um, so that can be a um, you know a, a kind of a shocking kind of reveal moment there. Uh, we also have here the prediction cards for the Bene Gesserit. So um, they've got a special ability where they can try and predict uh, a certain faction winning the game on a certain turn, and if they get it correct, then they win alone. So they can kind of one of one of their strategies is uh, making a prediction and then trying to see that uh, prediction through to fruition so that they they win instead. Um, which is quite an interesting um, uh, mechanic. Uh, probably quite difficult to pull off. Um, I've never played the Bene Gesserit, but um, you know, um, it is something you know to kind of work towards. And then finally here, we've got some more cards. We've got quick reference for the sequence of play, which is really handy. We've got the storm cards um, for the storm moving. And we also have the um, the Quillitsits Hadarach, which... Uh, is these are the alliance cards basically so when you ally with them um, a player then you give them your alliance card and you, you basically share the ability um, and some of the combinations can be really quite powerful okay so that's all the cards there um, we've got one little bag here that's that has the little pegs for the battle wheels uh, and I think that's everything that's in the box but you can see there is a wee insert there for keeping everything together okay um, so yeah, so that is the unboxing of June. Um, it's uh, for the money, I think. Um, it's a really, really nice production. Um, it's not really particularly expensive, um, but you're getting quite a lot of game for your money. Um, if you like games that have a lot of negotiation um, and are really highly interactive, but at the same time can be quite unpredictable and quite fragile, then this could be a game for you. Um, I definitely, um, having played the Rex and this one as well, um, I'd definitely say it's not going to uh, appeal to everybody. Um, but if you have the right group, then I think you can have a lot of fun with this game. Um, but just be aware that you need to set aside a good amount of time because it does take a while to play. So yeah, so that is Gale Force 9's reprinting of June. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, then please like, subscribe, comment, um, and yeah, just uh, let, let me know what you think. So until next time, have a great day and take care.